2006, O.J. Simpson gave a no-holds-barred interview, including his gripping account of what might have happened that fateful night. For over a decade, the tapes of that infamous interview were lost. Until now. I think uh, it was found a couple of months ago, and there's a lot of interest in O.J. There's been a FX drama. There's an Oscar-winning documentary series. He got out of jail and uh, prison after nine years in October. And um, there's overwhelming fascination with the case. And Sunday night's a big night for TV. And new season's starting. And there's a lot of competition. Great time to release it. And she says, if you, hurt, if you damage that, you're going to have to pay for it. And I go, well, if I pay for that, I guess I have to pay for this, too. And I kind of hit the front of her car, you know. So she went in the house. I don't know what she did when she went in the house. But, I mean, it's my car. I pay for everything. So I pay for everything. Now we're giving you the guy. The guy himself. And you're sitting opposite him. And he's talking to you for two hours. And he's letting you into his brain, into his psychology. So that's pretty unique contribution to this uh, OJ mania. But um, I don't know where you go from there. I don't know if there is another kind of OJ piece to do. But I think, you know, we certainly get a place in that, in that order. Hypothesizing that he was there, but he slips, tenses, and says things to Judith Regan, the interviewer, when she asks him about the bloody clothes. He says, I do remember that. I do remember them putting, putting those in a bag. Yeah, I do remember leaving my wallet. He doesn't say, hypothetically, I could have put the clothes in a, or hypothetically, I could have, he like kind of goes in and out of his tenses and, you know, it's, he does it with a kind of randomness and frequency where it would be a stretch to say he was calculating when to do it or not.